So respiration, can any one of you define this? So respiration, what is this process? What happens here? Respiration is the process in which breaking down of substances happen. Breakdown of substances. Why? Because after the breakdown, energy will be released. After the breaking down of the substance, energy will be released. Correct? That happens in respiration. Where does it happen? Can any one of you tell me where does respiration happen? Yes. In the living cells, inside the living cells. So, it's called cellular respiration. That is what we are going to deal with in today's session okay so since the respiration occurs inside the living cell this this process is termed as cellular respiration fine well let's look at the substrates that actually substrates which will help in the respiration process know your nutrients see <laughs> it's in the it's cut in the shape of a pizza but it's not a pizza there are many 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 uh, food items over here right uh, just overall, can you quickly list down the general nutrients which are there in this picture that you're seeing? Yeah, general, all, of, all the nutrients that we can see here. Tell me, quickly. Let's make it interactive, right? Keep answering the questions, then I'll also enjoy. Know your nutrients better. Give me the general nutrients that you know about. We have studied in what? What was the chapter? My molecules, right? Well, so, well, if you see the and list the major nutrients, it would be something like this, right? The proteins, you will have the fats, you will have the carbohydrates, some major nutrients I'm talking. Correct? Yes or no, everyone? Very good. Now, what does our body do with these nutrients? Proteins, carbohydrates, fats, or rather I would say, how does these proteins, carbohydrates, fats help in providing energy? That is what we are going to understand and explore today. Fine. Well, so this is possible because of a magical process that happens. That's respiration. That's respiration. Yes, it's because of respiration that this, this happens. And these are the substances which are known as the respiratory substances. So would you be able to define respiratory substances now? So substances which will be broken down to liberate yes to liberate energy are called the respiratory substrates substrates respiratory substrates are those which basically respiratory substrates are those substances which can be broken down to liberate energy right very good now so let's talk about the respiratory substrates a bit more respiration Carbohydrates, fats, proteins. Now tell me, we always refer to carbohydrates as the instant source of energy. Okay, so the primary substrate if I talk about for respiration to provide energy is carbohydrate. And carbohydrates are present in abundance. Okay, so carbohydrate. So, you know, that's the reason carbohydrates form a major part of all the energy drinks. Because this can give you quick and instant source of energy and the name is energy drinks so energy drinks means you should always get quick and instant source of energy from that drink so what will be there the abundant source that is carbohydrate will be there but at times this is not the case at times when your body will is lacking on carbohydrates that means you don't have proper carbohydrates stored in your body then that will what will happen your body will start utilizing fats yes have you ever thought about it? So your body will start utilizing fats after carbohydrates. Please note this down. If your body, if in your body, both fats and carbohydrates are there, what will be utilized first? Carbohydrates. Then, then fats. And after that, the proteins. So this is the rank C. Rank 1, rank 2 and rank 3. Right? Got this? Fine. Apart from these substrates, there are certain organic Acids also like the palmitic acid. You write it down. Palmitic acid. Fine. Are also used as substrates. Fine. All of you got this point. So carbohydrates first, then the source of energy is fats, then proteins. Okay. So only when first carbohydrates are exhausted, then the body will start utilizing 
fats. When fats are exhausted, then the body will switch on to utilizing proteins to provide energy. Fine. And this generally occurs, you know, during starvation. During starvation, your body will start utilizing the proteins also from your body. And that's the reason people tend to become thin, right? Muscles and all. What are they? Proteins. Correct? All of you? Got it? Very good. Now, the question is, how much amount of energy is provided by all these molecules? How much energy is provided by all these molecules? Is it it's same or it's different? Let's figure this out. Well, presenting. See, energy values per gram of different respiratory substances is what I am showing you right now. Energy values per gram of different respiratory substances. You know, the amount of energy liberated after com complete oxidation of these substances. And how do we do? Measure in terms of one gram of these substances. The energy which is liberated after complete oxidation of one gram of these respiratory substrates in a bomb calorimeter. It's a calorimeter which is used to measure this energy that is released, right? Okay, so it's a it's a closed metal chamber which is used. It's called bomb calorie meter. Write it down, bomb calorie meter. You don't need to know the mechanism right now, but just it's a additional information that uh, you will love to get this, right? So, in a bomb calorimeter, this is done. This energy calculation is done, right? So, it basically, this calorimeter basically measures the heat of combustion of a particular substrate, right? When one gram of that substrate is used, complete oxidation is done, how much heat is produced? So, in that way, it is measured. So, these are the respiratory substrates, carbohydrate, lipid, proteins. Now see the gross calorific value. So the actual amount of energy which is released by the oxidation due to oxidation of one gram of a substrate of a respiratory substrate is known as what? The physiological value. Fine. So what is this gross calorific value? Gross calorific value is basically when you use this substrate in a bomb calorimeter, how much energy will be produced? That's a gross calorific value once more. So the difference between gross calorific value and the physiological value is, for example, how will you study? You need an instrument and the instrument is known as bomb calorimeter. Here, how it is calculated? One gram of these respiratory substrates, correct? Per one gram or per gram of this respiratory substrate, after it is being oxidized completely in this bomb calorimeter, then the then what is done the amount of heat which is produced is measured so that's a gross calorific value fine it is the gross calorific value now the actual amount of energy which is released by oxidation of one gram of the respiratory substance is known as the physiological value what the difference fine so for carbohydrate it's 4.1 kilocalorie per gram see physiological value is 4 4.1 here it's 4 Lipid C, 9.45, gross calorific value. Here it is 4. This is the actual amount of energy which is released. For proteins, it's 5.65, actually 4.0. What's the difference? Very good. Well, the energy liberated in this process is in the form of what? ATP, all of you know about it. ATP, the energy currency of our body. Not only us, plants also. Yes, can anyone of you give me the full form of this? We have talked about this a lot of times. Adenosine triphosphate. Triphosphate. This is essential. The energy currency of the cell. That is ATP. Let me show it to you. Come on, draw this. Draw it in your notebook. Okay. Don't have to label the atoms. Just this outline should work for you right now. So, right now I'm showing ADP. Adenosine diphosphate. Di. So, 2, do you see here? 2, right? Adenosine, adenosine diphosphate. Into sugar, adenosine space, adenosine, right? So, here, 2 phosphate ADP, then C combines with the phosphate and, and what happens? It gives what? Adenosine triphosphate. Adenosine triphosphate. Now, very important 
very important you know when this third phosphate is joining energy is stored in this bond now this bond when it will be broken later on this energy will be released and this energy will be utilized to perform various cellular activities once more adenosine diphosphate two phosphate then another phosphate is joined while this is happening from adp to atp this bond this bond right it is a high energy bond so the energy is stored in this bond right now when this bond will be broken down later on in any cellular uh, processes right this energy will be released and the energy will be utilized to perform cellular activities 